talked about going home since I was just a babe on their knees. They said that nothing compared to what was waiting up there, how one day we would finally be free. Well, I've never seen it, but I keep on believing it will be a place like I've never known. I keep my eyes on the All right, we're going to greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many glad you saved? Yes. How many thank God for the soul that was saved this morning? Yes. Praise the Lord. Ain't God good yes. to give us so many blessings? Yes. Undeserving, that's what we are. Yes. We ought to love and thank him a whole lot today and a whole lot tomorrow. Praise yes. the Lord. Thank you for being in the Lord's house. Amen. It's good to see you back out. Uh, I appreciate uh, what God's already started off this camp meeting with. And uh, looking forward to what he has in store tonight. I hope and pray that you've come prayed up. But most of all, if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus and the free pardon of sin, if you don't know him as your Savior, today's the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. And Jesus, amen, can change your life tonight. It's good to have Brother Barry Spears with us. Amen. He pastors the Sunrise Baptist Church there in Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, you'll get to hear him in just a little while. Anybody never heard Brother Barry? Raise your hand. Never heard Brother Barry. Okay. This side hasn't. This side has. About the way it looked. Amen. But anyway, uh, it's good to have him with us tonight. All right. It's good to have the Parsons family with us. Amen. From Goshen, Indiana. It's good to have the Louder family with us from Hudson. North Carolina, is that right? Did I get that right? Hickory area. How about that? Uh, but let's just uh, worship the Lord. Remember, this altar is always open. You don't have to wait on man to call you. 
if you feel the sweet Holy Spirit uh, drawing you, and by the way, it has to be the Holy Ghost to draw you. Uh, don't believe in a whensoever will. Amen. I believe in a whosoever will. Amen. Uh, God, the Holy Ghost has to draw you. But anyway, let's open up our service in prayer. Amen. Let's stand our feet. Let's bow our heads. And let's ask God's blessings upon this service tonight. All right. It's good to have uh, Brother Johnny Chastain with us. Amen. Did I say that right? I'm close, ain't I? Amen. If you would, preacher, would you ask God's blessings on this service? Amen, amen, all right. You may be seated. It's good to have the Louder family with us. Amen, we're going to let them come and sing a couple. Amen, then we'll let the Parsons come, and then we'll have the main event. Somebody said, what's the main event? There's nothing that takes place with the preaching of the Word of God. Amen, so you pray for these. You give what they need to hear.
When Jesus walked from Pilate's hall To Calvary he gave his all He was scorned and rejected Through the land No one realized that day That with his life he paid the way That our sins would be covered by the blood I've been covered by the blood yes I've been covered by the blood ever since my Savior died at Calvary now when he looks down on me my wretched sins he does not see cause I've been covered covered by the blood. There he hung on a cross for the sins of the lost. A perfect man was dying there for you and me. No greater Y'all pray for her some. She's been uh, kind of battling some issues with her throat. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, we've been seeing some doctors. It's been going on for about four and a half months. And, um, you know, the church prayed over her the last time, and we've seen some improvement. And y'all just keep praying for her. She knows she had, she had done it before she could talk. Yeah. And, um, you know, he does take care of us. The devil Maybe knows where to, where to try us yeah. and where to hurt us. And, um, you know, this is something that we have all love to do. And, you know, it's just our way to serve the Lord. And so she gets a little nervous on songs that are high, so y'all pray for her. And the Lord will help her.
to believe your best. Hallelujah. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Good to have the Parsons family with us from Goshen, Indiana. Amen. Anybody here never seen the Parsons family? Got a few. Amen. All right. Let's give the Lord a hand as they come. Amen. God deserves the praise in the house tonight.
as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One of the last things that I was able to do for my daddy when he before he passed, as I sat in the intensive care room, I was able to see. It is well.
Jesus, he whispers, I'm your friend. He lifts my head and he dries my head. Oh, 
devil says, why don't you just give in? When my Jesus whispers, I'm a friend. He lifts my head and dries my breathing. I keep crying. I keep trying. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still trying. I'm still crying. I'm still praying. devil says, why don't you just give in? But my Jesus whispers, I'm afraid. Well, oh, God sure has been good to me. Well, I ain't never stood up and given my testimony like this unless I was preaching, but, but Jesus Christ changed my life, Brother Barry. I was sitting here this morning, and he's singing the song, and they said, I remember, I believe it said, and all I could think about is all them times and all them days. Right. Well, it's shot out of my mind. About six years ago, I didn't have a thing left. I'd, I'd give my life over to drugs from the time that I was 12 years old. I'd live my life on and on, and I thought that's the way that I was supposed to live, and, and I thought that it was just my heritage, that I was just supposed to live that way, and that's what I was going to do, and I knew that God called me to preach, but I'd run from God's call on my life. Uh, for years, for over 20 years, I run from God's call on my life, and I ended up and lost everything that I had. I tried to build my life my way. I tried to do it my way. I tried I, everything that you could think of. Sin, I was in it. Every single bit of it, I done it. I ain't proud of it, but I am proud of where Jesus has brought me from. And I'm not nothing, and I won't never be nothing, but if anything looks good in me, it's Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you tonight, Lord, that I'm just so thankful that Jesus changed my life. I don't want to take up much time, but I sure do appreciate and love the Lord tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. It was right across the street. You spent many nights, wasn't it? God's able. Amen. Brother Barry Spears, amen, from Columbia, South Carolina, amen, amen. Sunrise Baptist Church, amen. Are you, are you, get him on there, guys. All right, praise the Lord. I, <laughs> whoo. Mm. <clears throat> Columbia don't have a monopoly on God. Amen. I thought, I thought God, as good as you were at our church this morning, I'll just go up there and try to be a blessing and endure another Sunday night service and, you know, uh, but good night. <laughs> My wife texted me while y'all were, I took a picture of y'all and sent it to Miss Dee Dee. I'm good friends with the Parsons, by the way, and, and she said, I have mixed emotions about that right now. <laughs> she said, I'm thankful that you get to hear them, but I'm kind of mad that I didn't go with you. And um, she said, if they sing Alabaster Box, don't tell me. <laughs> but um, thank you, Pastor, for having me out. Matthew chapter number 10 tonight, Matthew chapter 10. I'm glad to be in the church house. Thank you, preacher, for that testimony. Thank you, Pastor Parsons and the other young group that sang. Love to see children serving the Lord. And um, I appreciate their boldness to get up here and just let her rip from the hip. You can stand with me if you want to. Um, and Dr. Soundman, if you could just give me a, a tad more volume on the monitor. I preached my guts out this morning. Preached on hell. And uh, three got saved. One got rededicated. Um, you know, we're missing that today. We're missing, we're missing the condemnation of the law. 
and that we're missing uh, we're missing not a not a scare tactic, but listen, there's there's some things that people need to be saved from. And people need to understand that there's a real hell and there's a beautiful heaven. Jesus mentioned this Bible talks about hell more than it does heaven. And uh, heaven's not a draw card to make people repeat after you. Like the preacher said, you must be drawn by the Holy Ghost. But I'd rather be in church than anywhere in the world. This is my happy place. Y'all heard about the fella. Uh, his mom knocked on his door on Sunday morning and said, you better get up and get ready for church or you're going to be late. He said, I'm not going to church, and I'll give you three reasons why. Number one, I don't like the people. Two reasons. Number two, the people don't like me. The mom said, oh, I'm going to give you two reasons why you need to get up and get ready anyhow. Number one, you're 49 years old. <laughs> Number two, you're the pastor. Get up and go to church. You ever feel like that sometimes, preacher? I want to throw a couple verses at you, a little thought, and the pastor has asked me to preach my testimony. I've preached it a, a thousand times, and I pray. I don't like it. I hate it. The only thing good about it is that Jesus Christ saved me. And like the preacher's already said, I don't want to gloat and glory in a bunch of trash and filth, but I do want sin to look ugly and Jesus to look good. Matthew chapter 10, look at verse number 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Father, I pray that you'd help me tonight. Give me a few moments of unction from the Holy Ghost of God. I lift up the blood-stained banner of the only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, up against all the gloom and doom and darkness, defeat and doubt. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd fight the spiritual wickedness in high places uh, that may be going on in the minds and the souls of men and women and boys and girls under the sound of my voice. Uh, I realize that I can do nothing without you, but with you all things are possible. No law but love, no creed but Christ, uh, no price but the blood, and no book but the Bible. Uh, have your way, Holy Holy Ghost, and we'll give Jesus Christ all the glory and preeminence. In his name we pray, amen and amen, and you can have a seat. What's interesting to me in these two passages, now, I never saw this until just a few weeks ago. Maybe you've seen it before, and if you have, act like you haven't. What's interesting to me is in Matthew's passage, it mentions two sparrows for one farthing. A farthing is not quite a penny. In, um, in the word of God and so Matthew's passage mentions two sparrows for one farthing and Luke's passage mentions five sparrows for two farthings uh, two for one in Matthew and five for two in the book of Luke now five is an odd number so I'm going to preach on this thought the odd bird made it in the odd bird made it in I want you to notice just a couple things, and I'll get into my test. How much time do I have, preacher? Do I have about 40 minutes? Are we good with that? <laughs> There's a low estimation on this odd bird. There was an opinion that was placed on this bird, and the opinion of this bird is very low according to the world. Two sparrows are worth one farthing, not quite a penny, so four sparrows should be worth two farthings or almost two pennies. Amen or not? But we get this fifth bird uh, or sparrow in Luke chapter 12 and the seller is like he's advertising five for the price of four. <clears throat> five for the price of four. Mm, so the estimation made by the fowler or the seller is very low. This fifth sparrow isn't even worth being paired up with another sparrow. And for whatever reason, there's a low worth placed on this particular bird. Hey, buy four, get one free. It's a bargain. How many of you remember Kmart? It's a blue light special. 
Buy four, get one free. Sparrows were normally sold in pairs. If you read the Old Testament, sacrifices were always made in twos. It was two doves or two pigeons. But this odd sparrow or this odd bird gets unpaired. Maybe it has a broken wing. Maybe it has a hurt leg. Maybe it has a bad eye or some flaws or blemishes or scars from its past. And so maybe no one would buy it. It doesn't have much worth. No one wanted it. And so the owner says, you know what I'll do with this odd sparrow? I'm just going to throw it in on the deal so somebody can get it. Hands down. Maybe this bird had a drug problem. Maybe it had some addictions in its past. Maybe it had been abused as a young chicken in a weak moment. Maybe it lost its virginity at a young age. Maybe it had born to lose tattooed on its chest. Anger issues. Maybe it had an abortion in the past or divorced from a bad relationship. But whatever the case, the world had put a low value on this odd bird's life. He was estimated to be cheap and dirty and worthless. There's not much meat on a sparrow, maybe even a nugget if you try real hard. And friend, that's the worth of you and I before we met the Lord Jesus Christ. The world saw little worth in us, but here's the good part. Our God deals with precision. To the seller and to the buyer, the odd bird was valued low. But on the other side there was somebody bigger and somebody better that placed a value on it and that value was precise. God says every sparrow including the odd bird is valuable. Matthew chapter 10 verse number 29 says one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father period. That don't mean the father watches it fall doesn't say hey it fell but it falls with the sparrow so if God will ride the fall with an odd sparrow I I believe he's with every hop, chirp, and flight. Here's the good news. Are you ready? You and I are worth more than many sparrows to the Lord Jesus Christ. What I'm trying to tell you tonight is I'm glad the odd bird made it in. I'm glad that one that had low self-esteem, that one who had been rejected, that one who was on skid row, that one who had born to lose, that one that had hell's angels tattooed on his back, that one that had a crack pipe in his hand and a bag of cocaine in his pocket and liquor on his breath. I'm glad that odd sparrow made it in because even the fifth sparrow, even the odd sparrow had worth, hallelujah, to God Almighty you have worth. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was born the first time on September the 4th, 1972 to a man and a woman who were in on the brink of divorce. My mother and my father uh, had never been to church in their lives. And I was, a, I was just not even a few months old. My brother was a year and a half older than I was. And, and my mother and my father, my dad was a drunkard, on his way to hell, my mom knew nothing about Jesus Christ. The only type of religion in her home was Catholicism, and they didn't even practice that. But on a Sunday night, my mom and dad have been told uh, there's this crazy preacher named Alvin Fleming down at the corner of Alpine and Percival Roads uh, at the old country church, uh, and we've heard him preach on the radio, and this man is crazy. <laughs> they told my mom and my dad, this is the truth. If you want free entertainment, my mom and dad couldn't afford to go to the movies, couldn't afford to go to the picture show. They said, if you want free entertainment, you go down to that church on a Sunday night at 6 o'clock, and that man of God will get up there, his eyes will bug out of his head, he'll pin his ears back, get a set of leather lungs, tell you you're going to hell, and people pay him for it. <laughs> they said, get a babysitter for them two boys of yours, and go to the church house and get some free. My mom and dad literally went to see the show at the church, knew nothing about God. My dad drank him a few beers. I'm just telling you the truth. Drank him about three Pat's Blue Ribbon beers. Mom, they had divorce papers waiting on them on the table. Uh, when they got home, they said, we might as well go see the show. Uh, but little did they know that the man of God, uh, hey, he hadn't been watching Oprah Windbag uh, as the world burns all my illegitimate children and days with our wives. Uh, hey, he hadn't been listening to Johnny Trash and Tell Me Why Not. Uh, that man of God had been in the book. Uh, he'd been reading the Bible and praying that God would send a sinner in. Uh, and on a Sunday night in 1972, uh, my mom and dad walked 
again, sat about three quarters of the way back on the right hand side, and the man of God began to hang them out over hell, friend. My dad looked at my mom and said, I've done everything that preacher preached against. I'm going to fry like fat back in a lake of fire, like he said. I done lost my buds. Let's get out of here. I need a cigarette. My mom looked at my dad and said, Give him a chance. About that time, the man of God said, Now, sinner friend, I've got good news for you. You ain't got to go to that place called hell because a man named Jesus went to a hill called Calvary. Shed every drop of blood that he has in his body so that you don't have to go to that place called hell. They turned to page 57 in the old red book, began to sing 81, just as I am without one plea. My mom looked at my dad and said, I'll go if you'll go. And honey, they stood there, walked an old-fashioned aisle to an old-fashioned altar, got John 3-3 born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and God took the booze out of his hand and put a King James Bible in its place. I was raised in this stuff. Hey, when that brother got to shouting and that woman got to squalling down here, I felt at home. I said, oh, yeah, I like this place because I go to places where sometimes you got to look around and see if anybody's living. I like, I like when people shout and holler and have a good time in church. I was raised in this stuff. I was raised at Greer Baptist Camp Meeting. Some of, my, some of my best friends were preachers growing up. I knew all about shouting and running and crying. I wasn't saved, but I, I sure knew when the Holy Ghost come in because the atmosphere changed. Y'all feel the atmosphere change early? So preacher, I don't know what you're talking about. Either get right with God or get saved. The atmosphere began to change. God, the Holy Ghost, stepped up in here and said, I like this. I like singing about walking on the water. I like when you sing about there's going to come a day when, when you forget everything he's already forgot. I, it's almost like God saying, I like when you sing about the devil can't cross the bloodline. He inhabits the praises of Israel. He begins to walk the aisles. And some of y'all, y'all got so much pride. The Holy Ghost walked right past you, landing on him and her, not little young enough here. And God said, if you don't want me, I'll go to somebody who does. But I'm glad, hallelujah, I was raised in the old time way. Glory, hallelujah. There's so much liberty in this church, I feel like I'm preaching in midnight. I was raised in this stuff. My dad took a my dad got saved, called to preach. <laughs> He's in glory. He went to glory three years ago. My mom's watching. Are y'all live streaming? My mom watches me every night of my life. I preach every night of my life. She watches me. I said, Mama, you hear it over and over. She said, You're my boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. 17 and a half years old in the backside of a mall parking lot, got into a breakup with a girlfriend. Rather than run to God, I run to the booze. Popped the top on a fifth of Jack Daniels in a 1986 Camaro in, a, in a Morgantown, Pennsylvania. I was working at a mall at the Weaver's House of Chicken. And on the backside of that mall at about 9.45, 10 o'clock, I looked up to heaven. I said, God, I'm not going to end up like the preacher. I'm not going to end up a sop drunk. I'm not going to end up a drug addict. I'm just going to slip into Sin City for a little while. I'm going to taste of its dainties. I'm coming back out, and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, evade the wrath of God. I'm not going to get caught. I'm going to, I'm going to live it up, but I'm, not, I'm going to live it down, and Mom's not going to find out. Dad's not going to find out. You're going to forgive me, and I'm going to go on about my business. Let me tell you something. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I pop the top on the fifth of Jack Daniels. Poured liquid fire down my throat. Put some rock and roll music in the cassette tape player. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. I'd never heard rock and roll music. I'd never tasted alcohol, and I'd never smoked a cigarette in my life. And I said, well, if you're going to sin, you might as well do it all at one time. And so there I was in a 1986 Camaro on the backside of a mall parking lot, drinking liquor, smoking a cigarette, and listening to some rock and roll music. And I tell you something, it felt good. Don't lie to your kids. The Bible specifically tells us there is pleasure in sin. You tell your kids there's no pleasure in sin and 99% of society is indulging in sin, they're going to say, well, if you lied to me about that, what else did you lie to me about? Tell them the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Tell them there is pleasure. It will hook you. It will put its fangs in you. But when it's done with you and the other side of the billboard is coming true, you'll wish to God you never touched it. That liquor turned to a six-pack a week. 
which turned to a six-pack a night, which turned to some opiates, Tylox, Percocet, Hydrocodone, uh, Vicodin, and, and, and Oxycodone. And I began to mix opiates with alcohol. And then I was turned on to uh, cocaine in Reading, Pennsylvania by one of my <coughs> elderly family members. <coughs> and what I did not realize was one drink turned to 10, which turned to 100. And the next thing you know, 13 years later, I'm back in South Carolina and I've got needle tracks in my arms. I'm hooked on heroin and cocaine and methamphetamines, uh, riding with Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club. Uh, listen, I was going to ride my motorcycle into a lake of fire, make a big splash, and impress the devil. Uh, that's how foolish I had become. Uh, I'm telling you, sin took me further than I ever dreamed of. Right. Amen. I had become the odd bird. Yeah. I was that bird walking down the street. <laughs> You'd look at your family and say, get away from him. Hair down to here, tattoos all over my body, needle tracks in my arms. My sinuses were pouring blood from the amount of cocaine and methamphetamines I had ripped my sinus cavities with. I was 140-something pounds. I was wide. Listen, I was half drunk, hollow-eyed, whiskey bent, and hell bound. And I was going to impress the devil when I got to hell. That's how foolish I was. <clears throat> I'd been up for four days. Four days speedballing. Some of you don't know what that is. Thank God. If you do, you understand. That's when you take uppers and downers at the same time and it puts you in a state of euphoria. You don't eat. You don't sleep. You hallucinate. You go into a, a state of psychosis. And for four days, I was dealing dope at a what's called a coalition party with Hell's Angels and several of the other clubs in that area. I'll never forget. They said I passed out for about two hours on a Sunday morning after not being home nor eaten nor slept or drank anything but liquor. For four solid days, speedballing, been up. <clears throat> I passed out on an old grungy couch in a Hells Angels clubhouse right outside of Charleston, South Carolina. I'll never forget when I came to, my body was going into detox and I needed another shot. See, the devil didn't tell me that. My body was locking down on me because it didn't have the dopamine, the artificial dopamine. And so I woke up and I remember my head was in a fog. I didn't know how long I'd been passed out. I didn't know really what day of the week it was, what time it was. All I remember, Brother Parsons, I was sitting in an old grungy couch about where you're at in the clubhouse. If you walked in the door, right to the left, I was sitting right there. And I remember sitting up and that old long hair was hanging down. I looked down at my boots and my Levi's. I didn't have a shirt on, and I remember looking at the needle tracks in my arms and all the tattoos all over my body, and, and I, remember, I remember thinking, my God, how did you get here? And for the first time in 13 years, the Holy Ghost of God began to convict my heart. You say, preacher, where'd that come from? Mom and dad was praying while I was partying. Hey, you can stop a lot of things, honey, but you can't stop a grandma and a grandpa or a Holy Ghost-filled mom and dad from praying for their young girl. God will put the hounds of heaven on your heels and track you down, baby. Track you down, will you? Hey, you know what I found out about the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost ain't scared of a crack house. He ain't scared of a meth lab. He ain't scared of hell's angels, outlaws, tattoo parlors. He ain't scared of bar brawls and pool tables and backside of mall parking lots. The Holy Ghost ain't scared. He's a strong man. He'll show up anytime, anywhere, baby, and convict you. All of a sudden, tears begin to roll down my dirty cheeks. Brother Johnny, I stood up, you've heard it, walked over, looked at the, the bartender that passed out and I threw up all over his beard. I could tell you the song that was playing on the jukebox that morning, the smell of liquor and, and methamphetamines and pot and all the, the nasty smells of the nightlife and all the sounds of the jukebox and the motorcycles idling and rumbling and all the hooting and hollering and partying and all these sounds and sights and smells and tastes are going on. And I sat down in that old grungy couch again and the Holy Ghost of God took over my mind. That fast I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear the jukebox. I couldn't hear the Harley Davidsons. I, I couldn't smell the liquor and the marijuana. I couldn't see, hear, smell, or taste anything. All of a sudden, God Almighty rolled my mind back when I was a little boy, sitting in the Greer Baptist camp meeting old Billy Kelly. Y'all might not know who he is. Old Billy Kelly got up and he began to sing. 
Like the prodigal son, I wandered in darkness. I traded my life for a world of good times. No peace in my heart I ever could find. Then he got to that good part. And I got so tired of eating after the swine. I began to talk to God for the first time in 13 years. I said, God, are you talking to me? That's where I'm at. I'm tired of eating after the swine. I'm in the hog pen. And the Holy Ghost said, shut up, boy. Let him sing the chorus. <laughs> oh, Billy Kelly began to sing. I believe I'll go home and eat with the Father. The table is spread. They're waiting for me. I can see the Father coming out to greet me. And I want to be just a servant for me. I said, my God, I got to get out of this hog pen. I don't know where I'm going or how I'm going to do it, but I've had enough of this hog slop. I'm fain would have filled my belly with the hush the swine did eat. I said, my God, you got to get me out of here. And God began to remind me. I tried to tell you, boy, sin will take you further, keep you longer, make you pay a whole lot more than you ever dreamed of. <laughs> Say, preacher, why are you so happy? I'm getting ready to tell you. <laughs> Pulled that hair back into a ponytail, sis. My whole back tattooed Hell's Angels colors. They told me if I ever tried to get out of the club, they'd skin my back with a blowtorch. I'd never make it out with them colors on my back. I remember pulling my hair back into a ponytail, threw them colors on my back, got on a 1999 Harley Davidson fat boy with 21 inch ape hangers. <laughs> I said, if I can just get home, see my wife and my two babies, I'll be all right. Got to see my wife. Got to see my son and my daughter. Rolled the throttle back. Got up to the stoplight about 9.30 on a Sunday morning. I had no idea that God had a divine connection going on that morning. See, my wife was doing her best to take our kids to church. Our son was 10. Our daughter was 3. She was going to the old country church, just trying to escape the reality of living with a hell's angel dope dealer. She said, she'll tell you this, she said, I used to go to church while you was out there dealing dope, running with hell's angels. She said, I'd sit beside your mom and dad at the old country church. She said, when that man of God would get up and preach, she said, sometimes I would just close my eyes and just imagine what it must be like to have a husband that was a preacher of God's word. That particular morning, she hadn't seen me in four days. Pulled up to that stoplight about 9.30 on a Sunday morning. The only stoplight in Elgin, the only stoplight, that is, the only stoplight that's still there. I pulled up on one side, and lo and behold, as I looked on the other side, there she was, all yeah. five foot zero of her. Yeah. I said, God, let this light turn green. I can't look at her. I can't look at her. I'll wait till she gets out of church. Maybe she'll be not angry or something. Man, God said, no, you're going to sit there, and you're going to let her talk to you for a minute. Yeah. I couldn't hear a word she would have said. But her heart began to scream, preacher. Yeah. Honey, where have you been? I didn't sign up for this. Our home's so dysfunctional. I'm doing my best to keep things together, but they want to know where the mortgage payment is and the car payment. They're going to turn the electricity off and the, the kids are going to bed hungry. There's beer in the refrigerator, but no food. Honey, when are you going to come home and be a husband and a father? Our son Cody was 10 years old at the time. I remember him pointing through the window saying, as if to say, Daddy! Mama goes to bed crying every night. Me and little sister, we're scared. Dad, will you come home and be a father? I'd like to throw football and I'd like to go hunting or fishing, Dad. But all I know is hell's angels in the house and cocaine on the coffee table and cussing and brawling and fighting and bloody knuckles and emergency rooms. And Dad, when are you going to come home? And about that time, my little girl looked up through the window as if to say, Daddy! It won't be long. I'll have property of on my back. I'll belong to one of them boys down there at the clubhouse and they'll pass me around and I'll have STDs and I'll be pregnant out of wedlock. And Hey, Dad, there's nothing you can do about it because you're teaching me that's a way of life. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. 
and the light turned green. My wife turned right, and I went straight three miles across the railroad tracks to my home. Can I tell you, I began to cry again, and I remember thinking, you ain't cried in 13 years, and all of a sudden you can't stop crying. You know what that was? The Holy Ghost of God got on the back of that Harley Davidson, began to put his arms around me and squeeze me. I remember throwing that bike to the concrete, didn't even put the kickstand down, boys. So wore out from the world, needed a fix. My body was hurting. I remember walking into the house, walked into the master bathroom, locked the door, and laid down on that floor. And I said, God, I can't get out of this mess. I can't break free. I can't put the dope down. My body goes into withdrawal and lockdown. I can't stop shooting heroin and eating opiates. God, I can't stop. And I can't get out of the club. If I was to try, they said they'd skin my back with a blowtorch. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost, as sure as I'm standing here, almost in an audible voice, said, hold on, son. Help is on the way. <laughs> Help is on the way. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. I remember standing up and looking at all the tears that I had cried. Didn't even want to look at myself in the mirror. Sunken eyeballs, my cheeks were sunken in, and old long hair, just a nasty shell of a man. I remember going to the same bar, the same club, the same places. I could not get high. I could not have a good time. I was miserable. I was cantankerous. I was mean, getting in fights, bloody knuckles. I mean, just terrible, terrible all week long. Eight days later, number of new beginnings. October the 27th, 2003, at about 9 o'clock in the morning, I woke up sick to my stomach and said, this is more than a physical sickness. Saw that King James Bible my dad had given me when I was a little boy sitting on top of the gun cabinet. Had about an eighth inch of dust stacked on top of it. I remember the spotlight from heaven coming down on that Bible. I grabbed it by the chastain and I brushed the dust off of it and I walked into the bathroom and I laid it on the counter and I looked in the mirror and for the first time in my life, my sin had become exceeding sinful. And I realized that not only was I hurting myself, but I had broken the heart of God. At that moment, I believe, is when I got saved because I turned from the mirror to go call my mom and dad who represented God to me. But that was the moment that my heart was turning to Jesus Christ. I went to what's called a landline. You know what a landline is? Do you? No. <laughs> That's a phone with a cord hooked to it. I called my mom and dad who live right next door. We had 10 acres out in the country. They lived right through the woods. And my mom said, hello. I said, mom, there's something bad wrong with me. Click. My mom hung up. Now, listen, she's watching. You know you're in bad shape when mama hangs up on you. It's one thing for dad to hang up. That's just no big deal. It's, a, it's one thing for your wife or your husband to hang up on you or your kids. But when mother hangs up the phone, I stood there and I thought, you've done it now. You finally want to get saved. And mama is fed up with your trash. And you know what? In my heart, I couldn't have blamed her. Yeah. I stood there, and I don't know how long I stood there, for moments. I remember throwing the phone on the bed. I said, well, what do you do now? I walked out of the master bedroom, walked into the living room. By the time I got to the other side of the living room, the back door was opening up. Now, I heard footsteps coming through the mud room, and as I looked up, my mother was outstepping my father. Had a blood red back, King James, tear stained page, Bible tucked up under her arm. Outstepping my daddy on a mission to tell me what was going on in my life. She borderline preacher. Borderline. Met me halfway through the living room floor. She said, boy, I'm going to tell you what your problem is. You're a sinner. That's your problem. Now, for 13 years, all she's heard is, mama, you leave me alone. You go to church. I'll do what I want to do. If you want to talk to me, you better leave God out of it. I'm living my life. You live yours. Leave me alone about Jesus. Yeah. But this particular morning, she's on a mission. I mean, Bo, she got them ears pinned back. 
She said, you're a sinner. That's your problem. I said, Mama, I know. She said, you better stop arguing with me. She said, you're going to fry in hell if you don't get saved by the grace of God. She said, your problem's not hell's angels and parties and drugs. Your problem is you're a sinner and you need Jesus. I said, Mama, I know. She said, you better quit arguing with me. I'm telling you, you're going to split hell wide open. You need to get born again. I said, Mama, I know. She said, what did you say? I said, I'm trying to tell you I know. She got up in the third heaven just because I recognized I was a sinner. Amen. She knew that was the first step to getting that boy saved. Yeah. She turned that cane into a helicopter, buddy. She began to spin around. I said, Mama, will you come down long enough? I need to get saved. She said, oh, boy, come here. My dad's standing over against the wall beside my wife and our two-year-old daughter. Our son was in school, and they're just standing there staring like, what is going on? We didn't expect this. It was out of nowhere. It was a suddenly in my house. My mother knelt down on my couch. I wasn't even in church. But in my heart, there was an altar. She said, let me show you what the word of God says. I said, please do. She began to read. Everything she read sounded a whole lot better than Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Led Zeppelin. She said, son, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. She said, do you believe that? I said, oh, yeah. Next point, please. Step two. She said, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Do you believe that? I said, Mama, I'm almost dead. Will you get to the good part? <laughs> the next verse that my mother read to me has never left my heart. It's the, it's the sweetest words I've ever heard in my life, Miss Lynn. She said, here's what the Bible says about you right now. I'm expecting some bad stuff. But God commendeth his love towards us. Yeah. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Jesus. I said, Mama, you mean right now, the shape that I'm in? You mean God loves me before I get saved? She said, Boy, God loves you just the way you are. I said, But Mama, I got needle tracks in my arms. I got liquor on my breath from last night. I spent all my money on dope and wine and women and song. She said, But God still loves you, boy. <laughs> confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved she looked over at me to see if I was ready to say the sinner's prayer but I was already on my face saying God if you're as real as mama says you are if you're as real as that book says you are and you love me in the shape I'm in I'm sorry for my sins save me forgive me come into my heart be my savior and I'll do my best to follow you I'll do my best to get off of everything that I'm on about ten gallons of galvanized glory come down to my soul. I got saved. I'm telling you, I got saved by the grace of God. I got John 3 3 born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Heaven bound with the heaven down. Ain't got time to fool around. People wonder why I get so happy and jacked up. Because I was tore up from the floor up. Needed a check up from the neck up. And heaven came down. About 10 gallons of galvanized glory come down to my soul. And I got saved. Hallelujah. Been, boys, it's been... I'm preaching to y'all. It's been almost 20 years. You ain't got to lose what you feel. Let me tell you how you lose it. You keep going back. Keep playing around with sin. You'll lose your joy. You'll lose your power. You'll lose that. Listen, you'll lose it all, friend. You better hold on to your faith. Hold on to that feeling. Hold on to that clean living. Keep reading your Bible and praying and saying no to the world. Hey, you better quit thinking about the good times you had and start remembering the bad times that you ended up in. <laughs> Got saved by the grace of God. Hey, can I put it this way? Bless you, Lord. The odd bird made it in. 
I was that fifth sparrow. Nobody wanted me. I tattooed up. Messed up. I was that one that my son, I'll, I'll never forget. He was 10 years old. I went to pick him up early from school. Had to go somewhere with his mama. I remember tapping on the glass. My son looked, and I looked so terrible. When my son saw it was me, he went like this. I was so malnutrition, messed up. Got saved on a Monday. Walked into a Hells Angels clubhouse on a Friday. God shut the mouths of the lions, and I walked out a free man. Said, Preacher, what'd you do? I walked in there, threw my colors on the table. I said, do what you got to do, and let's get it done. And God said, if you're crazy enough to do that for me, I'm coming in. <laughs> Mom had been praying and fasting all week long. Brass knuckles and pipes and pistols and revolvers laying all over that oval table. About 80 grown men that would have beat me to death. God shut their mouths. They said, why you won't out? I said, I got saved Monday morning. They said, saved from what? I said, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Bro, I hadn't been, I hadn't, I hadn't, I didn't even have one Wednesday night under my belt at church. And I was in there preaching to 80 hell's angels. You know, that's the Holy Ghost. I said, I'm following Jesus now. I can't follow you if I'm following him. It wasn't long after that, I went into a methadone clinic. I was on 80 milligrams of methadone, modern-day subutex, suboxone, all that crazy, filthy mess that just keeps you high. Yeah. 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 That's right. Flushed all my take-homes down the toilet. Yeah. Eight weeks later, with my wife sitting by my side, singing to me, hiding guns, hiding phones. Yeah. Eight weeks later, hardcore detox. Yeah. Went for a walk around the front yard. Hadn't shot heroin, took methadone, subutex, suboxone in eight weeks. Come back to the front door. My wife is standing there holding the calendar. I said, what are you doing? She said, it's been two months today. I said, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Went to work one day and come home. She was holding that calendar. She said, you know what today is? I said, no, what's today? She said, one year. You've been clean one year today. You know what I found out? The odd bird didn't just make it in. The odd bird got cleaned up. <laughs> I found out that a day turned into a week, and a week turned into a month, and a month turned into a year, yeah. and two, and three, and four, and this October will be 20 years right. since the odd bird made it in. Yeah. I want you to bow your heads with me for a moment. I'm, the Holy Ghost just said, be done with it. Father, as the pastor comes, I'm glad that the odd bird made it in. Low value, broke, bruised, messed up, but he still had value to you. you. Lord, you brought him in on the deal. There might be someone here tonight that feels like they're that odd bird. Nobody cares, no value, no worth. Lord, they're of more value than many sparrows. Every hair on their head is numbered. Every time a hair falls out of their head, heaven's database has changed at their name. That's how much you care. Lord, if there's one here tonight that's lost, would you save them? Get them in. But for those of us who know that we've been born again, put a fresh urgency in our hearts to be about the Father's business. So let all those odd birds know that there was an odd sparrow that the world threw in on the deal. But God said he's going to make it in. I pray tonight you'd have your way. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for moving through this place. I feel the presence of a friend in this place. And we sure do appreciate it. Pastor, the service is yours. If you would, let's stand to our feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Now tonight, God has spoke. The Holy Spirit is walking through our midst tonight. You say, oh, but preacher, I've not been where he's been. Yeah, but you're lost. You're not saved. You say, preacher, yeah, but none of that appeals to me. Well, it may not have been your lifestyle. Maybe you know what it is to be born again. You know what it is to be saved. And you're walking afar off. You're following afar off. And the Holy Spirit's giving you one more opportunity. Now, you can push him aside tonight. 
But you better come by the good Holy Ghost of God. Swallow your pride. And make it to this old-fashioned altar. Sing, girls. Amen. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Come on. Everybody else and what they think. You come. You come. Maybe you're praying for your lost family. But there's somebody. There's somebody needs to come. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ain't room. Oh yeah, there'll be room. Just come on. Yes. Today's your day. It's time that you quit playing games with God. God's been so good to you. Hey, you listen to me. God's been so good to you. And He's never gave up on you. And you still treat him like you treat him. He loves you. He loves you. Why don't you come and love on him a little bit? Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. You know who you are? Holy Ghost already preached your soul. Come on. Come on. If you'll take one step, I promise you God will take the rest. You feel like your back's against the wall. There ain't nothing. Feel like you're no hope. <laughs> There's hope. There's hope. There's somebody, hey, there's somebody walking away from God. You know who you are. Come on. Swallow your pride. It ain't about you. It's about him. We're worried about everybody beside you. Come on. Hey, you better come, friend. Mercy's reaching down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. He never once ever gave up on me. Bless your name, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> Bless your sweet name. Bless your sweet name. Hallelujah. He never gave up. Hey, come on, friend. Come on, friend. Hey, make that first step to God. Come on, make it for the Lord. Today is your day. Now, today is your day. Now is the accepted time. <laughs> Give him glory. Lord, touch, I pray. Lord, touch, I pray. Listen, friend. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. That's right, buddy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's still drawing. God's still drawing. Come on. Come on. Hey. 
He never gave up. <laughs> Mercy reached down. Oh, glory. Come on, Miss Barkins. Amen. Lord, I pray you touch me. Oh, God. Burn the blood of Lord Jesus. And I'm going to claim it with me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus, my God. God, give us a call, Jesus, 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 Jesus. God, I claim it, Jesus, You pray, buddy. Listen, trust him. Head, if you will. The Holy Spirit's still walking through this place. I'm going to let them do whatever's on their heart. But listen, here's something that ain't going to happen when you stand before God. So when you stand before God, it's done. One more opportunity you're going to have to come to this altar. Preacher, do I have to come up there? No, you can do it where you're sitting. But he said, if you're ashamed of me, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father, which is in heaven. What you need to do, Christian, I need you to pray. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> you say, they ain't my day. The Lord said it was. He's drawing you, friend. And I promise you, if you'll take one step, God will take the rest. Would you do that? Sing, girls. Whatever's on your heart, sing. Sing. Christian, you need to, we'll, we'll close when God says close. Person beside you, would you go pray with me? Just ask them. Just ask them. Come on. There's not nothing worth dying and going to hell over. You say, Oh, but preacher, I can't live it. No. I can't live it. You can't live it. But if you'll surrender it to God, <laughs> if you'll surrender it to God, you can live it. Listen, you can walk. God will walk with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hey, you're tired? <laughs> you're tired? You're tired of running? Bless you, Miss Amanda. Bless you. Help me here, amen. Thank you, honey. take friend what's it going to take God can get your attention Proverbs 17 11 an evil man seeketh only rebellion therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him you better let that sink in
why wait? Preacher, I've got to get these things straightened out in my life. No, friend. If you'll come and get it, God will straighten those things up in your life. There's a lot more this preacher could have said to you tonight. But the Holy Ghost walking through this place. Come on. Come on. standing beside you to excuse you how about it say excuse me hallelujah hallelujah they're still coming friend come on
y'all heard it a thousand times, but I'm thankful for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day. I'm thankful that when you, you, you go astray and you start drifting, there's something in there that just draws you back. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that conviction. I'm thankful he let me come back again. And I pray I never stray again. And I'm so thankful for what he's done for me and my family and what he's blessed me with. I know I don't deserve it. I know I don't, but I'm thankful he gave it to me anyway. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know I done give a little bit of my bed. Boys, you know who I used to be. thing about it God is a gentleman and all he can do is call you and draw you have you obeyed him tonight I don't like to close a service like this but because there's folks still need the Lord Was anybody saved tonight? Did anybody, God save anybody tonight? Is there anybody that just gave their heart life to the Lord? I'm sure there's many rededications. And we thank God for that. You rededicated your life tonight. God showed you something in your life. And you come and repented over it. Just lift your hand. Don't be ashamed. Anybody? Maybe prayed for somebody. Amen. Bless you. I sure do love him. I'm glad he's real. I'm glad it's something I can feel. Now, you're not saved by feeling. But something big as God move in, preacher. Hey, it's there. He's there. And it'll come out somehow. You might not act like this preacher, and you might not act like me. You might not act like this preacher. But you know what? It'll come out somehow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I love him. Well, we can say we've had church. Amen. Brother Preacher, I'd like for you to go to the door if you don't mind. Yeah, come on. I don't do this, come on. I feel like the Holy Spirit yes. Let me just say this. Um, you've heard my testimony. Let me turn this on so you can hear me maybe. Um, our church, Sunrise Baptist Church, um, about a year ago, we started a program called Hammer Down Ministry. Jeremiah said, the word is not the word of God like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Ezekiel said God will take the stony heart out and replace it with a heart of flesh. So the word of God is the hammer and it breaks those stony hearts down. But the same hammer that breaks down is the same hammer that builds up. So we started Hammer Down Drug Rehab Ministries and we have, I think we have six right now that's um, an active part of it. We're trying to expand and go forward. We need to get we got to pass codes for the county, and we got a, we got a double wide donate. Anyway, what I'm saying is this, Pastor. I hope I'm okay with saying this. I brought um, I brought some CDs with me. My wife and I I preach against the world's music, so I hand out Christian music. Um, but anyhow, I left them in the truck. I wasn't going to bring them in, but I'm going to stand out in the parking lot. Is that okay, or in the back area? And um, I give them away. If you'd like to have one, I think there's 23, 24 songs on it, done studio quality. And uh, it'll, it'll be a blessing to you. And I'll give you one if you'd like to have one. If you'd like to make a donation, which is not necessary. And I wasn't even going to do this. 
but we need, we really need um, to help build that facility to help more people. Um, if you want to throw something in the bucket for it, um, it'll go straight to Hammer Down Ministries and it'll help get another drug addict off the street. You say, preacher, I don't know how to deal with someone who's got liquor on their breath. This crazy fentanyl and methamphetamines and these psychopaths running around, I don't know how to deal with them. Well, if you'll support someone who knows how to deal with them, that'll be fruit to your account. So, um, and if you, if you don't have any money, you don't want a CD, will you please pray for Hammer Down Ministries? We want to take this thing as far as God wants it to go. We had a boy get saved. We're going to baptize him Sunday. This boy has tattoos over at least 70% of his body. He was hooked on hair. He, he's got more needle track scars in his arms than I've ever seen. He has a scar where he got drunk in a bar, was running from the law, jumped a fence that had a big post sticking up, and that post went in his leg, up through his stomach, and out his side, and he hung there for 30 minutes, impaired, impaled by that fence post. They had no idea why God spared his life till he got saved about three weeks ago. <laughs> One of the best members of Hammer Down Drug Rehab Ministry we've ever had. I mean, he's shouting. He's going to be a preacher is what he's going to be. But we're reaching out to those kind of people. So please, pray for Hammer Down Ministries. I'll be in the back with some CDs. If you'd like to have one, grab one. Thank you so much, Pastor. Well, you're, going to give an you're going to have an opportunity right now. I'd like for the ushers to come around. Everything you give in this offering goes to the preacher. And he can, he can distribute that how he wants, okay? For himself, to the ministry, whatever he wants. Amen. So I uh, appreciate you guys. All right. You stand till everybody puts something in the offering plate. Just lean on. 